every so often you run into a glaze that really needs to be uh, doctored up beyond its its basic formula because there are glazes that don't um, do well they settle and this happens to be one of them it doesn't have a lot of clay in it so the chemicals in the glaze itself settle out and make a hard band on the bottom is very difficult to work with so I was taking a class a workshop up in um, Reno last year well a year ago the end of August last year uh, John with John Britt who has written a couple books on glaze chemistry and like that and, and uh, it was a cone six called mid-range mid-range glaze workshop I don't do anything like that all my stuff is uh, whoa, you know several hundred degrees lower than that but I, I, mean, I am still exploring the, the opportunities to go back to that mid-range um, arena. I was doing mid-range work way before it was fashionable. Um, but one thing he told us that kind of stuck with me is because in mid-range you use a lot of Fritz. And when you do that, you end up with glaze that will hard pan to the bottom of your container. That's real common. But he said that what he routinely does, and if you look at his formulas, you'll see this, he has 2% bentonite to everything, and that keeps it in suspension. And I thought, well, wait a minute. If it works for John, it'll work for Jim. So I came home and was about ready to do a glaze firing anyway. So I needed to mix some of my chemicals up into glazes. And I put 2% bentonite into this particular formula. You need to be able to take a lesson and transfer it into your own situation. Being able to take the lesson learned and apply it to you know, our particular situation is a good thing. Why do I do this upside down? Well, it's because these two glazes are not wholly compatible. If when this glaze gets over the top of this dark one on the inside, there'll be some um, reactive bubbling and it looks cool, but in massive amounts, it doesn't look cool. So I do this upside down so it's running off the, the edge and not all over the inside glaze. Pretty straightforward. And then I do two of them because by the time this one's, I finish this, this one here will be dry enough that I can pick it up and then I hold it slightly sideways and when I apply it to the rim, it doesn't drip into the rim. It doesn't drip inside the, the piece. I came to the realization few months back that I actually spend the vast majority of my time in everything but what I now call wet cycle. So actually making the pieces is not where my time is spent. It's in this kind of thing. You know, here I am glazing and then I'll take it beyond glazing and then I'll wash the bottoms and I'll do a couple decorative things on the surface, all that stuff. The actual piece is maybe 
um, maybe 10% of the finished product. Making the piece is probably, and in some pieces it could be less. The value of what you see in the piece is really in all this decorating. Kind of interesting like that. Now we start. Coat number two.